Well, it's another episode of Let's Be Real. Welcome. We have enough topic lines up in this show tonight. We have your most interesting guests today, and we have our usual hosts. You know them, the one and only Dr. C. She'll introduce herself. But before we introduce the show, let me tell you about her wine, of course. We have Samantha Wine. Samantha wine is in different, um, there's a white and red wine, there's rosé, if you like the other uh, beautiful well from wines you can get from Samantha wine. But anyway, I'm not a wine expert, but Dr. C, take it up. So I'm Dr. C, I'm a winemaker, a wine expert, and uh, today we are having the white wine. So it's called Samantha Wines. Many of you know the Samantha brand. I mean, I had someone say, tell people what you do so that we know how you make your money. I've built this company from the ground up. I'm an em I employ very many Kenyans. I create jobs for Kenyans because I'm a business person. So at Samantha's Bridal, we connect people and cultures by helping them navigate and truly celebrate life's greatest moments. You know our wedding fairs, you've watched our TV shows, wedding shows on <laughs> KTN, home, yeah. yeah. yeah? This, she tells me she grew up watching. She'll introduce herself watching the shows. Our guest tonight. Yes, yeah. and that's what we do. So buy Kenya, build Kenya. Our wines are from Spain, so we are building global brands. But the brand is Kenyan, homegrown. Thank Let's you. go to Collins then. Thank you guys, and I am Collins, a makeup artist with 10 years experience. I feel like I need to have more wine. Okay, I shouldn't have more. This is my seventh class. I'm Collins, a makeup artist and a businessman, really. I, as you can see, my product is on the table. So we'll engage through social media to talk more about the product. And you well, of course, you and um, we have our guest tonight, an author, a lady of very many feathers. Introduce yourself, Madam Maria. So hi everyone, my name is Maria Nyambane Waweru. I am the founder of The Young Magazine, a kids magazine. I'm also the author of two books. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a scam. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I and love the original means. you. Yeah, I'm also a mom of two boys. I'm married. And I'll Can say happily, even if I've written the book. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be in the show. Maria, you've written the book, Marriage is a Scam, but you're happily married. Yeah. Anyway, we'll come to that <laughs> later. Yes. <laughs> but talking of marriage, yes. the numbers are in. Yes. As a matter of fact, there's a study that has been done by the Kenya Bureau of Statistics. Kenya Health Demographic Survey. KDHS. Yeah, he's our numbers guy. Kenya <laughs> Health Demographic Survey. Mm. And they've looked at uh, when people are moving from one place to the other. And they, what are the reasons they migrate to, to those new places. And when it came to marriage, it was found that Kisi is the biggest place where a lot of women are going to get married. So Kisi... Looks like kissy men are hot right now. But Maria has proven us otherwise that she's yeah. moved from kissy. Anyway, you are correct, Dr. C. It is, I, I looked through the survey and I saw that um, the counties where guys are moving into in search of love and they are getting lasting unions. Kisi was leading at 63% followed by Nyamira was at 59, Kakamega, Siaya, Homabe were at 59.3. Then it's just a, around that Western circuit where, and my intuition is that um, if, if, I, I, if I, I look at the numbers, I see that then when women go there, they find either men who have homes, men who have things, and there are less distractions. The urban centers fared very poorly, like Ajiado, 9.9% only of women who move there get married. And it, it, it tells us something that um, urban centers, 
women have many other things to do. Either they are doing jobs, others they, they follow on their careers more than marriage and all that. But if you're in the rural setup most of the time and you get this environment where people either you are, you have, you are raising your family or you're farming, or, then there's likelihood because Kericho also was at 57.9. So it showed that the western rural areas people were likely to get married. But the number one county was Kisi, that it's a standard 63.63%. So, but uh, uh, when I'm looking at this, I'm also wondering in terms of the, um, uh, the availability of what to do, yes. and also how diverse mm. and the distance. Yes. I think Western Kenya is very popular. Yes. And so it's very poor as people are moving in. Mm. But is there, is there something specific we can actually say about Kisi men? Is it possible that they are more authoritative, they are more offering direction, and plus, so when the women go there, not only are they provided for, because I think all the bananas come from Kisi. Okay. Yes, but also... They're food. Yeah. They're polygamous. Uh, no, oh, they're really? <laughs> No, and not kisses kisses men. as much. Kisses are not polygamous they're as not. much. Is they're it the not. religion, the seventh day the, the SDA, what, what mm. comes out is that they are more family oriented. Oh. And the, 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 the research says that um, it is easier, these women who are having a relationship ended up marrying there because they had a structure, a structure of the moving from wooing you into marriage. Most of the other people, they are not necessarily wooing for marriage. They are wooing for the other factors which are there. You just want companionship. You just want to have a good night. All those things. Or maybe the hardship. Like, can you imagine going to get married in Maralal? No, actually, uh, when it comes to Western communities, they've, already, they've always maintained their cultures. Like, kisses and Western men maintain their cultures. This is how women behave. This is how they live. So you find that nowadays marriages are not sustainable as they were before. But these men have maintained their culture. And also the fact that there's a lot of food in kissing. So economic yeah, times of course, are pushing yes, yes, people yes, yes. there. They can I nurture the children. Yeah. Economic yeah. times. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Only she as a kissy. I'm going to side with her because only a kissy would tell us what's happening in kissy. But kissy's in Mbali. Mucha na toko kwa katafute mchumba. Yeah. How long is a road trip? <laughs> it, 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 it's not a road trip when you know what you want when you know what you're going for yeah. you'll just go because is marriage is already hard if there's someone out there who's going to make it easy for you oh please I ladies see. get a car Pro kiss it direct what you, need, what you need to tell Collins is that um, when you, you see there are not very many men out there who mm. want uh, lasting relationships and the people will tell you, upper qua ground, mm. these girls will tell you, qua ground things are different. Yeah. Yeah. So when you find an, 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 an epicenter where people are still willing to get married, mm. where people are willing to go the whole hog and to put you in the, what we call, in the family way, then necessarily, and of course, Maria cites very interesting things that, remember, you cannot marry if you can't feed. True. Sure. You can't feed a family. You are marrying where? Yeah. If you can't feed yourself. So it is difficult and you, you get that the economic situation in the city sometimes cannot allow even our young boys to get married because you are, you are hustling. You want to pay bus fare, you want to travel, you want to... And then you find the money which remains as an expense of food is very minimal. That's why people eat air burgers in this city. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. But reaching Mount Kenya, where there's a lot of land, lots of, lots of macadamia, yeah. what, <laughs> what does it also show about the, the communities that are open to diversity? You see, it is easier for marriage in... The, remember that our, the societies in the Western circuit, they are very paternal. Mm -hmm. And they are strictly, when you reach a certain age, your father or your mother will start sh t sending hints very early. Uh -huh. You need to be, you know, you need to be settling down. Eh? Mm -hmm. You need to be doing this. If you move to the central part, this we are moving into an area where the urbanization has really affected the cultures. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. The Kikuyu have been the people who have been really, really, their culture has been very, really been battered by mm. enough influences. So, and in every urban center in Kikuyu land, it's almost like, if you go to Muranga, it's just, you wouldn't even know where Muranga starts and where Kiambu ends and where Nairobi starts. It's the same thing. So the culture of Nairobi has permeated into these areas that sometimes it is difficult for those people who are growing in those areas to pick up uh, their original culture. So they cannot marry the way these other far areas mm. would get Actually, married. Actually, most of them don't know their cultures. Yeah. True. They are so... Yeah. They are urban. They are totally yeah, urban. Yeah, lots of other groups. Like, I'm married in Moranga, but when I go there, it's like I'm still in the city. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. even the garden has electricity. So you don't feel any tradition in that place. It's wow. very urbanized. So you find Moranga? Yeah, I'm married in Moranga. <laughs> let's, 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 move, let's move to the next topic. Well, Muranga is a very nice place. Very. There's something which is really disturbing, which uh, happened last week. A Jomo Kenyatta University uh, student or boy or a young man traveled all the way to Meru to visit the girlfriend who is in KMTC there. And the girl, the guy was suspecting that this girl, being that the, the previous night was her birthday, there must be something she might have been enjoying with someone else. And true to the fact, she, the guy reached uh, Meru and found and confirmed his worst fears. The girl was there, but with another man enjoying their time. Apparently, this boy had carried um, a knife in his inner garment. So, of course, they started, they started talking and an argument ensued. And the young man stabbed the girl in the neck and everywhere and she died on the spot. Why am I saying th this issue is difficult? This year alone, among our university students, 18 kids have killed each other of these relationship issues, 18, and we are only in, Aga, in, Sep, in, in July. So it's, there's a lot of jealousy going on in relationship in campuses and even in the world. The jilted lover syndrome. I don't know what is your take. Okay, I will say this, like I always say, our kids, we are told to raise our children with gentle parenting, but the kids are not gentle mm. at all. Because you find that these are kids who have never been told no. So must you date that one person? Yes, you found out they are, not your, they are doing the wrong thing. You are not okay with that. What is the essence of killing? I, I will, I'm not siding with the one who was cheating, but at the same time, I feel like the one who killed should not have had blood in their hands because of one person. And mind you, it's a student. The relationship was not bound to go so far as that if they were serious about it. It's not like they were meant to be, or it's written somewhere, this is fate. It's either me or you die. It's like these young people don't know how to receive a no, or how to, receive, how to accept the outcome. In marriages, people cheat. We don't kill them. We live with them <laughs> the next day. But why is it that these kids are killing people? It's because nowadays, saying no is wrong. We are, we are in a situation where my kids are not even beaten. They're not even taught. So they're like, what they want is what they want. But to an extent of killing someone because of what you wanted or who you wanted, that is really, really wrong when it comes to these students. Dr. C, mm. Maria has really tackled some issues there heavy in parenting. Mm. But what is the psychology of, of, of these jilted lovers? Jilted lovers. Um, I think when people cannot handle their emotions, people can, just cannot handle their emotions, in terms of adulting and it really is a root the root of it is um i think parents really need to take the the heat on this because if you're not equipped to handle disappointments to handle the winning sometimes in life sometimes you win you lose it even goes up to uh, even our education system such that we, we have to bring up in our children in a way where they understand. It's okay to win sometimes, 
and it's okay to lose. To lose and yeah. how do you handle disappointments? Mm. And that's why things like sports are really important. It's not just academics only. It's not just about academic performance. It's about how are we exposing our children into... So the other day at uh, my daughter's school, they were playing another school, and they, the other team was scoring and scoring. I think it was netball, scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring. And, scoring. <laughs> and they could not believe home ground. Yes. Home ground. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. other school has really beaten them and beaten them thoroughly. Yes. And it was so, it was one of these big IPS, IAPS mm. uh, games mm. that the children were actually crying. Mm. They actually cried. And uh, so the coach was saying that, go and tell your children it's not okay to cry. It is not okay to cry. It is okay. There was one child who actually even got, finally got a, uh, an award later on for actually handling defeat with grace and poise. So when it comes to things like games and all that, it's not about going to the Olympics. It's about learning to play in a community where sometimes you win, you lose, you take your defeat, you go find a new love, and defeat can be anything. That's my take. It's parenting and our schooling system and the society. We must introspect. Kolo, you're not married. What do you think? Uh, I just think we need to. I think churches need, I don't know who will force our local churches to make psychology part of the regular yeah. programming. The first service should be therapy. I think I think schools right. more because kids are not going to church as much anymore. Oh. Yeah. Kids are really not going to church as much. So yeah, psychology school, is, school can play a better role. Yeah. 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 Because it's all about how they handle disappointment. Yes. I don't see why I would stab someone. I mean, yeah. when I think of that, of the bars, you see, you see how this shows in the movies? Someone is so angry and then they're like, I, I wanted to kill someone, but I don't look good in orange. Or stripes are not my thing. So <laughs> you see I know. I know. I know. That's someone using humor to handle their disappointment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think they need coping mechanisms, coping it's tools. Coping, like yes. you said, schools and churches. Really yeah. So we need to things. treat our teachers better. Yeah. We need to equip them. We need to work with the teachers. We need, as a community, we need yeah. to work together to see what is happening. 18, 18 of these children just murdering each other. Right. But you know, there's, it's a also crisis. The, there's also the guilt parenting, whereby I'm raising this child because I know I'm a busy mom. Mm. So when I see this child over the weekend, remember this child has been raised by multiple nannies. Oh, so yes. this child has gathered so many characters from all these nannies. So when I see this child on weekend, whatever this child yeah, wants, mommy, this, yes. yes, I have to they overcompensate. Don't know how to say no so we have not learned kids. how to deal with our kids in terms of disappointments because different nannies have taught them how to handle that differently. So they grow up with resentment and when they go to school now, they show. But is it wow. possible that they've also been exposed mm. to content yeah. that yes. they should not be, be seeing? Yes at their age because look all the, they're seeing these things and these things are affecting them also psychologically yeah, yeah. My, my, my problem also is not even content dr c and uh, the the parenting is that we have not taught kids values you see the school and the, the, the university for this matter because these kids are university kids at 18 and you're going to college for 18 kids to have murdered each other it means that the university just concentrates much on the academic yeah. well-being mm -hmm. minus the fact that the first intro in that campus should be you've come you are now a young adult you'll fall in love definitely but you also have heartbreaks mm -hmm. and it's life the girl you might fall in love with might go to another campus and find another love there. Love is geographical anyway. Right. Yes. And then the Tuma Fair. Yes. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like these young people fall too in love than the older ones. No, when you know, I'm going to pass as a way. Yes. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Yes. And like she said, it comes back uh, to parenting, really. And still on that parenting note, <laughs> parenting is such, a big, uh, is such a broad topic. When there's another story I saw recently about, is it the man or the money that mm. women want? 
because even when it comes down to parenting, you realize that parents nowadays are choosing to abandon the, the father of their kids to now move on with Ben 10, still in marriage. And I'm thinking, in this, could this be the situation where kids are getting lost in that? Because you said the mother is busy, or the, the parent, to be fair to the mother, so we don't blame it on her. You find that one parent is busy, or both parents are busy, so now when they see that child on weekend, they don't have the time to lay out a disciplinary plan. So can this be traced back to the fact that nowadays people all over are blaming mothers for running away from their husbands to date Ben 10s? It's a trend. Do you think, why are you blaming it on the women, first of all? First of all, I don't know who is blaming it on oh. the women. Look, oh, I turned society, out yes. like um, a very straight Kenyan citizen. Yes, I was raised by a by, by a father. Yeah. My parents divorced when I was two. Mm -hmm. So w w why are women being blamed because they left? It's you know that's a different phenomenon. And women are, are being blamed for moving on with Bentens. So Bentens represent happiness. For anyone who doesn't know, a Benten is a younger lover that a woman moves on with I when they leave their spouse or yes the see, man in their lives the, the question is i think it's this is a new trend wow. a new trend in that um many successful women find younger men attractive mm. and there's also a, a whole lot host of young men who are looking up to older women and it's because of very basic reasons yeah. what we used to call cougar love mm. in that a woman who has made her money and would not necessarily look for another man who will be telling her, this is what you need to do. So her, she goes for the good time and for someone who will make her happy. Young men have a lot of energy and they have a lot of, they have new things they, they want time. to tell. They have a lot of, they want to tell you things which you want to hear. When you sit down with an older person of your age, You'll be thinking of investment. This young man won't tell you investment. You have done your investment. Hmm. So, and also these young men... But I've met some very intellectual young men. So I don't know. Okay. Yeah, but I just remember... It's said that it's a blanket conversation we have. We assume that Ben 10s are just dumb toy They're boys. not dumb. Yes. But they, um, they will tell you a lot of energy. They do nice stories. What mm. you want to hear. The trends, what's happening. Yes. They have it. Mm. But remember these women as well... She needs someone who she can talk to. But these older men sometimes are unavailable. Everyone is running his own gig. Yeah. He's doing his own thing. He's busy with his own stuff. And so the phenomenon has become because yes. of these two things. People cannot meet in that middle ground. Yeah. And even the, 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 the Bentens, what they are looking for, is either physical, they need some money, oh, I and they see. don't want to be asked to be you. The woman knows, it's like a tire which knows the road. Oh, knows I how see. to manage this boy. <laughs> and and he's a mother me. figure. <laughs> and that's not Maria. I feel like you I was telling her off camera that I feel her name should have Doctor. It, it's very lyrical. Maria Nyambane Waweru. I'll throw this question to you. Is marriage has come? Oh, I feel so smart. <laughs> is marriage then a scam? It, yeah, it is. Yeah. Marriage is a scam. You know, when people... I'm offended. Oh, it, it, is it, it is a scam. Whatever you are told you're going to get in Let's marriage, that is not what you get. Let's take a few seconds. The church is throwing tomatoes on the screen. <laughs> Tell us, what do you get? Let's take a <laughs> <laughs> So just to be clear, guys, Maria is unmarried. And stop me if I'm wrong. She's married five years? Yeah, five years. Two kids? You'll be 30 now? I'll turn 30 this year. Imagine. Happily married. Years. Happily married by the... And Waweru, like I said, Maria Nyambani Waweru. Waweru is her husband. Loving husband, not a dad. So carry on. Do tell. On yeah. that note, but how, how is then marriage has come? Whatever you are told before you got in is not what you find inside. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> when it comes to what you get now, it's what you create. It's, it's what you make out of it. Or... Or... or but I, I feel like next time we should also talk about this sponsor thing because, you see, even men go for younger girls 
but that's a story for another day. <laughs> 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 we are going to take a commercial break, guys. Please stay tuned. I'm enjoying the show so far. I hope you also are enjoying the show. Thank you, guys. <laughs> New Superstay Vinyl Ink from Maybelline, New York. Shake up your long wear with no budge vinyl color. Color lock formula. Up to 16 hour wear. New Superstay Vinyl Ink, Maybelline, New York. Welcome back on Let's Be Real. And we are having very real conversations. And now we want to talk about how to calculate how much you should pay your better half in the event of a separation. I mean, we've seen it everywhere. Divorce has become part of the society. So how do you come up with how much you need to be compensated? The, the laws of Kenya has a standard of how, when in case you go separate ways, uh, many, many, many couples, especially if you marry downwards, someone always thinks is a security that uh, I will go and fleece this guy. And if you marry uh, upwards, you always look that if you get divorced, maybe you'll, you'll walk up with a windfall. So the, the courts uh, put up a bit of standard and they say that... Um, there's a bit things like both couples should be able to provide housing. They should be able to provide uh, housing and transport and all those basic things. So in case you are married and you, can dri you drive and you had another home, then you cannot demand so much. But the man must give a few things like a house if he, the woman didn't have, uh, to take a fare or transport to school and entertainment is not a must and medical. So these things people put there. I've seen very many couples asking for entertainment, 200,000. Food, calculates food, 500,000 separately. This, the issue of food and entertainment is for both parents. You cannot lump thing, that, that, uh, the whole of it onto a man or onto a woman. So if you think you're going to work out of a relationship now, even the person who is divorcing has a responsibility. And that responsibility is clearly not shared. So I think because people are in ignorant of the law, they always think that they'll work out with millions. But so, um, in terms of calculating this, there, there's things that just seem fair and not fair. Mm. And sometimes you ask mm. and then you get. Yes. Okay? Yeah. It's like that. Mm. So, for example, and it's, it's an issue of fairness. Yes. So, say you're separating and you're the man, I'm leaving you with the children anyway, and mm. I'm the money person. Mm. So I just move on and I'm just busy entertaining the whole world, whatever, and your children, you, now, you know, it's always assumed it's women who want the money. Yes. And it's most of the time the case. But yes. just put it yourself in the woman's shoe. Mm. So these children are living, you know that um, they are living a certain standard mm. that is not, they could be, they could live better. Mm. They are going, to, maybe they were used to certain schools, now you have to take them to this out of this world experience. They've never used public means. It's not like it's a disease to use public means. Mm. They, they, you just throw them. You, they get this shock. Obviously, they'll recover, and we underestimate the ability of children to recover mm. and be better people. Mm. But I think so that the spouses, and in this case, I'll not say the women or the men, the same standard, if you can maintain it, I think the other spouse should ask, especially for the children. You know, like in the case we are referring to sometimes, eh? I, I read some affidavits, the other affidavit, it was very clear. They are saying that the, the transport was, con, was taken care of. The person wanted a V8, 
But this car they've been using is there. It's still in question, the, the lady has. So most of the guys also, uh, it wasn't changing the lifestyle that much. It was that this person had found a way that if you are leaving, you leave me much better than you found me. Because the, the, the defense, this guy is saying that I live a block next to this other person. My kids who I'm living with use the same vehicle. This one is denying. So they're living in the same neighborhood, using the same vehicle, doing, going to the same school. So many people, when they're coming for these divorce cases, it's not that they want you to take them, but they want to make a windfall. It's just quick money. You just say, if in case you're leaving me, let me just show you. Let me bring you down. I don't think in this case it's an issue of bringing down. It's an issue of, first of all, why are they even going into the same school? You know, we, we cannot pretend that we are, there's what is legal, and we cannot pretend that we are not human. Okay? Mm. We cannot pretend that. You are subjecting these children to such psychological torture. Mm. They're like, but I can see Papa's car there. Why isn't Papa coming to us? Why is it like these children? I, I really, really, honestly, I, my heart goes out to them. My heart really goes out to them because they are aware, they know, but they just cannot. So they grow up as rejected children. The psychological, to, and I think the only thing as a parent, and in this case, it's usually the women, as a woman, you find that you're going to ask what you perceive that your children need and deserve. Of course, the courts are going to make their own decision. But at least when the children grow up, they will not say, Mommy, you didn't even fight for us. But, but as a, a father, imagine your children seated somewhere. They're like, even me, I can imagine as a mother. Yeah, my daughter asking, but mommy, why are you not coming home? I see you are just in the ne neighborhood. You're even driving a better car. They begin to hurt you. But but these guys have never lived together. No, I feel like the they resentment. They live together. The resentment that comes with the divorce is bigger than the upkeep that they ask for. You like, think so? You you find that uh, you resent someone so much because of the outcome and how it will affect the children. So you are trying to overcompensate by asking for what you feel is best. Right. And most of the time I feel like that is the right direction to go to some of us. But uh, in some cases, if he can't, I always say that if he can't do it, just understand and heal first. If we learn to heal before we get to that, let's first start by healing before we get to that trust fund or that sub child support. Because when we go there with our emotions so high, we will we'll always be asking for what we see. Like, if your life is improving, I want my kid's life to improve. If your life is changing, I want the same for my children. So unless we heal from within, then we will always be fighting with this child support issue. You know, and there's nothing to suggest that uh, these people have not healed. If I understand very well, this has taken sometimes people really try everything by the time you see those things going to court by the time it's just that <laughs> and touch wood we don't have cases there but by the time you see them there there's a, a lot of the times these people have really tried they have really because these are educated people by the time they're asking for these amounts whatever they're they have really tried so, but and perhaps they are not just getting each other and there's nothing to suggest that they've not healed and they've not dealt with it because it's been but maybe been, two or three years yeah. in the making. But do I, feel, I feel like they sh most of the time it, doesn't, it shouldn't get to court. If it gets to court, then it's already war. Actually, they recommend during a divorce, if I, I think a client told me this a while back, that when you go to divorce court, they recommend mediation yes. before. Yeah, you and they, I think they try actually mediation, every, yes. uh, most of the things they mediation starts first. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to now, it's in court. When a mediation cannot do it, then now you go to the divorce. The yeah. war now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, I've got a friend. Oh, do tell. 
Yeah, I'm telling. <laughs> so she was having, her divorce was happening out mm. of the country, actually, in mm. Switzerland. Mm. And she was married to one mm. of these really, really, like, you know, if you're counting the top 10 rich people, mm. in, and you know that's a very rich country. It was mm -hmm. a son in one of those families. And she was like, oh, you know, when it came to now then maintenance and mm. all that, they had mm. gone through so much. And she mm. was asked. Mm. What do you want? Mm. She was like, no, me, I just want to go back to my country. I just want this and this and this. Mm. And right now, we are talking 20 years later, when we look back mm. and we analyze, we are like, mm. how stupid were you? Mm. You should oh. have taken. <laughs> mm? But, but, but that, 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 that does not you know, come you from should have. So, so the thing is, yeah, the, she thought she had healed, she just wanted peace, she just wanted to go, oh, she, and she just wanted. So it was like, until even her lawyer told her, you're stupid. Your lawyer, uh, the lawyer actually <laughs> told her, you're that. Uh -huh. And the ex looked at her like, you don't want? Huh? Yeah. And there you want to look holier than thou, you want. So what am I saying? Ask. Yeah. Ask. Let it go on record. Let it go on record. And let me tell you, sometimes some of these partners or men or women don't know sometimes what it takes to maintain that home. Yeah? Maybe they, 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 they are not even aware. But not you the know? argument was how do we calculate now? How to calculate what is, what what is fair. fair and okay, yeah. well, I think what is fair, number one, um, the roof on their head. Yeah? Uh, you can imagine if you go to court and the court decides you have been living in one of the leafy suburbs and right now you are being given one of the one bedrooms whatever in across Eastlands there. Nothing wrong with Eastlands, but you understand? Yeah. This is it's, it's a complete geographically. It's very different. So mm -hmm. the roof, health is really important. Can the, health insurance is really expensive. Very. The, of course there's NHIF. But there's the health insurance, things like that. Schooling. If they've been going to private schools, and uh, yeah, they need to maintain that, to maintain a certain level of, can you even meet your cousins and feel normal and interact well, you know? Things like schooling, food on the table. I think uh, the parents, whoever is able, should be able to provide things like that. Holidays are a major thing. They're such a major thing. So if you are living in a certain level of standard, yeah, and uh, like now, this is, uh, this is July, August, you're trying, can I get a play date? No, they're already gone for summer. They're already in summer. There's nobody. All your friends have gone on holiday. You're back in class. Write a, write a composition about how your holiday was. And everybody's busy writing what there was, and you, you're just there. Yeah, I was busy playing with the dog in the, I don't know what. Like, you, you don't even know what to write. <laughs> These things actually really add up. So the holidays are extremely important. Yeah. Of course, the means of transport, how they are going, and assuring certain level of stability. Mm. And plus, of course, they should, there's what is by birth line and bloodline that belongs to them rightfully and that's why some people when they do their trusts like um who is this uh kate middle catherine middleton now the almost future queen the grandfather put a trust to ensure all his grandchildren and great grandchildren are educated so that is not that is not something you take away from a bloodline it's their birthright so there is what is theirs by birthright and there is what is superficial. So whichever way you put what you think they deserve, and that's how you work out that, leave yourself out for the, in that case and see what you can put together. And then let the judge or whoever, if whichever partner is leaving or being asked to put, let, them, let their conscience guide them. But the important thing is you ask. Oh, yeah. I think you've really captured it but most of the things also depends with the um, with their income and also the level of achievement you've got 
holidays might be very important if you are from the other side, but in some areas, some people holiday can mean nothing to them because they've never even been in holiday. I'm they're, talking of uh, if they were already yes, going if they're already, for holidays. Yes, but if you come from, so to our viewers, it depends with, we don't get it twisted that uh, if you live in these lands that, uh, or you live where we live in these lands or wherever you think that even now I'm divorcing, I need holiday. Dr. C has said, my friend, <laughs> friend, we shall go. Those things don't apply. It is not... <laughs> Maybe yeah. they are going to I, I Disney. They are going no. to Disneyland. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, Everybody I has gone to Disneyland, and we are the only yes. one. Like, don't let their life change. Yeah. What they were used to, That's maintain yeah. that. Yeah. So, if you are used to this life, maintain that. If you are not if like this, us, yeah, we'll maintain, maintain ours. that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But that, but uh, according to me, if you ask me about how it's calculated, I feel like if you are leaving me and your life is getting better. Yes, I've given you this, but can't you go an extra mile? Just asking, because you left me for your life to be better. So I feel like once I've given you the th my requirements, make your kids feel, feel special because you are now absent. Mm -hmm. Now you are not there. Remember when we were together, this is the life we gave them. But now that you're not there, how are you making these kids feel special after providing the things that they used to have? That will be more, more key to me than anything else. After provision, please just be present as a parent because your issue was with me, not with your children. And men, by the way, men actually always want the best for their kids. The only problem is that the fear they have is that sometimes, and many men out there will tell you, especially they tell you that you send money for school fees, the school fees is not paid. The same school, someone tells you, I use money on something else. So that's why men prefer to send money directly to school fees. You've seen the way they do it. They say, okay, if it's medical, there's a card. I'll give you a card worth, is, is it a, a, a gold medal, sta gold standard, gold standard. Mm. Every school, the school you're going, I'll pay direct. But there's no single day the woman and the money will interact. Because there are many people, and I will tell you, many people have told their, their partners when they divorce. Remember, not every, even those women, sometimes some of them don't have that interest of the, of the money they are raising their kids. They, they, you send 50,000, 100,000, and they go and buy clothes for themselves to go out, or they go drink with their friends. I know that's what's happened to someone I know. We work in yeah. the same building. Yes. So there's also the fear of people, of men being victimized. That's yes. why I keep saying mediation, arbitration. I think it's a, divorce has got to be one of the toughest things. It's in, very tough. Like yeah, it mind, is. It's financially, not. emotionally, like even. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's really, not easy, really not yes. easy. And especially, I mean, it's not easy. And the impact also on the children. Yes. It and is quite, and I think the partners should ensure the, the stability for the children, and then all of and you they, can just they fight now afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And oftentimes that falls the, the responsibility falls on you as a mother, right? Yes. Oftentimes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sure. So it, it makes sense that women are the ones who insist on getting the money. <laughs> it also makes money. sense mm -hmm. why women insist on staying in toxic marriages yes. for the same. Because you don't have the guts to, don't have the guts to go through yeah. all that. So well, I agree that um, we have agreed that we, it is important to look at how you maintain the lives of the kids at the same level, if better, if you're divorcing. For either couple, if you have the money, that's the best way. Excellent. But don't leave yes. the kids. They are seeing you, daddy is with a the car there and you're not right. coming. Mm. Yeah, Why so, isn't daddy coming to yeah. me? Um, what like it's so painful it's like it really is yeah it's i think we should leave our kids much better if yes. they're breaking up let a kid enjoy have the same life or, or even better right because dad struggle. cannot yeah. be leaving it up over there yeah and then mom is over here yeah struggling, struggling with over the kids. Versa, like yeah. mom is in Paris, and then wow. dad is over here struggling with us speaking of dad there's this story so online on standard digital and it was very, okay, I don't know if I'm the right person to talk about this because I have my own personal relationship with the clergy. I have kind of lost respect for the church, but that's a conversation for another day. Now, in this context, there's a 43-year-old man, a, a clerical, is it a clergyman, 
uh, he's a Catholic priest. priest. Yes. We call Who, them priests. Yes. He was found dead in a lodging with a staffer, hmm. and a female staffer in church, in, uh, from the church. They are from the same church. So uh, their, uh, their church is closer to Nairobi. The lodging was somewhere in central Kenya. So, so let's talk about the church business. So <laughs> I, I would say that um, the case, it's, uh, first of all, we would like to say that um, death is a very painful thing to the family who lost the priest because the priest, uh, we are told the priest was a very good man uh, yes. in Ruai Parish. He has done a lot of activities and his, everyone in that area always only had very positive vibe about him. Yeah, actually he, was a great, he was a great personality, yes. he, is in, he was a motivational speaker and he's done great things. But on this occasion, um, the priest went to Mona Lisa. It reminds me of that painting, of course. The, the, <laughs> you know, you know, Mona Lisa. It the reminded painting. me of the mortuary. There's a Mona Lisa or something. <laughs> so now, you know, Mona Lisa. The painting is of Montezuma. a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Of course, 1613 BC, mm -hmm. 1613 in the year 1613 which was done, and it was one of the most coveted paintings. It has been stolen, it was stolen in 1900. Uh, someone found it in 1960, it was uh, exhibited in France, it's still there. But what, when, I, when I, I remember this case, I always remember the hotel they were in. It's also Mona Lisa. So I was putting Mona Lisa, the hotel, and Mona Lisa, the painting, the most expensive painting. Of, gen of a generation. And this priest walks into Mona Lisa. That was his favorite joint. And you know that Mona Lisa is a woman with... Have you seen that painting? Very sly, mm. coily, the is smile. Is it a smile? Yes. Mm. Or is it, Almost, is it a cry? Or yes. You just or, don't know. You don't know. Mm. So, of course, the priest went through that Mona Lisa. Figuratively. <laughs> and... Wow. Things happened and uh, mm. he couldn't breathe. And he passed on when they were driving him. My, and this brings us to what I always like. The Catholic Church, which is a very big and beautiful church, has struggled with very many issues, and the church in general. But in this case, they've struggled with uh, cases of should priests marry or not? And the celibacy vows. Remember yes. the celibacy, these, uh, the, the rule of the canon laws, this one, number 277, which says, and I quote, that um, the priests are not allowed to be in company of the people who might lead them into temptation or otherwise. Mm. So that canon 277 in the, in the Code of uh, Catholic Laws, which is the canon laws, states that. This was promulgated in 1983. Remember before that, Catholic priests were allowed to marry. Even mm. the, fa the earlier popes had wives. Borgia. Have you watched the Borgia? Yeah, they had wives. They used to. So this thing is a new phenomenon. So I know where the, the rubber meets the road is that to reconcile the, your human aspect with your calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, man is a man is a man. Yeah. And their exit clause, when I'm done, do we have an exit clause? Are they allowed? I'm just wondering if I don't want to be a pope, in, not a pope, a priest. <laughs> Can I leave? <laughs> so, so if you go to the Vatican, yes. across the bridge, there's a place there called Castel de Angelus. Yes. Mm. So I was walking across that road with mm. my husband and I asked him, what was that? Mm. And he said oh, it, it was a prison for mm. priests. <laughs> yes, it was a prison is, for priests. The Castelli de Angelos. Yes, yes, it was yeah? a prison. And, um, gosh, you know me, when I saw that, I just, it, it's so heart-wrenching. I, I, my thing was, Swange and Bali. At least pretend they're going out of town for some, I don't know what, some meeting, yeah? Book different rooms. Mm. And then not even use that room. Or yeah. I don't 
to get three like, rooms and use the second one. I have to be an act to this <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we understand the other part. Yeah. But I'm like, just in your... Even the people, the people who work in the hotel, they even perhaps knew them. But so see, that was careless, a little careless. They should have cheated better. I, I okay. agree. I think I they totally shouldn't agree. have cheated first. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but now that they're already there. Now they're already there. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to find out. Right. Yeah. I mean, is don't there, drive your car. Option. Have someone else order the car for you. Yes. Like I can teach them Put how some to cheat. Put some mustache or something. Right. I Wear some even glasses. Serious. <laughs> Yeah, the I don't art of know. cheating. It is an art. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go to a hotel, order B and B using someone else's name? I know. Uh, Get some strange number, register. But you know, in this case, they wouldn't have been caught. Yeah. They wouldn't have. Yeah. This was an accident. Sometimes you can do all those things, and then the car breaks down, and the, the well, mechanic that is coming to help you is the mechanic that fixes your wife's car. Yes. Come up with some Absolutely. conference. <laughs> Some <laughs> conference, something. You know, you meant I was yes. going for conference. You can go for a priest conference. Go and inspect some project. Yeah? So do, do and you guys you're think, going with a secretary yeah. or something. Yes. So this and it sounds like all of us are defending so the, PR, the, the people cheating. No, 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 we need better I, laws I, I, for them. Okay, because I, I, I am not defending. Yes. For me, I'm not, I feel like they, they were not supposed to be caught. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But what if, about the man? It, it couldn't have been the first hello. time. It couldn't yes. have been the first time. So they've been smart all along. Yes. So this one time, it was their day to be caught. That's mm. what I was and talking. And talking, mm -hmm. talking of cheating, mm -hmm. I have known priests, literally. Mm. Yeah, like I cannot even say the particular priest right now because everyone will just know who they are, anyone mm. who knows me. Mm. I know even the villagers, they had stopped going to the church. You fundraise for, for the church, they eat the money. They are just about the money. They, they, even they come to your home, they look now, you, you have not given your... Your tithe. The, your, your tithe for whatever. Yes. And right after that, he, he even had his police, whatever, the church police that come and actually take the chickens from these poor farmers' homes. It had just become something else. So they just said, you know what? We are closing that church. Bishop, you bring us another priest. Or mm. this. You said that's a form of cheating. This one was just sexually cheating, mm. but really there are others who are cheating by stealing the church's money, and literally like br he even built a mall. Literally, been chased from so many places until now. We are just asking, why is the church still keeping him? And I forgiveness. Why? I think the church has really struggled with uh, very many issues, mm. and as a big organization as it is, like for example the Catholic Church, they've struggled with uh, issues of morality of their priest or a morality of their priest. They've struggled about the child, uh, children and uh, other things, um, the way they, people are mistreated or sexually mistreat children. These things have been there all through and every year if you read the report you'll see from very many areas there are many issues which are arising in the church. But for this specific case, I think the best thing would have been that the church needs to recalibrate. Just go back and ask yourself, you see, celibacy is a canon law. It is not, it's not that God ordered you not to. It's a church law. The Apostle mm. Paul ordered. Oh. So, but mm -hmm. actually Apostle Paul said, and I quote the Bible verse. Hey, you're he learning said, CEO. <laughs> no. He said, it is good for a man to have a wife. But if it will be difficult for you mm -hmm. to do the both works, then you can stay alone. But it is good for a man to have a wife. It is there. It is the second part which people read. And they leave this other bit. They are saying that Mimi... Um, and many people have misused that verse a lot. But there's no express way which tells you that you should not get married. This thing is just a canon law. That's why we call it canon law. You should not get married. This thing is just a canon law. That's why we call it canon law about celibacy. It is nowhere in the Bible. It is, it is what people think is uh, of putting the, 
the, the organization together. It's an organizational law of people. Because even in the 16th century, all the popes, and you've seen, they used to have wives. In fact, a pope who didn't have a wife was not elected. Then it changed. That's why I was saying the canon law was changed in 1983, which has now given them all these things, the, which we are saying the, break in, the one he broke is the 277 code. Mm. But it's hard for you to denounce your human side to go to a calling. May his That's soul really rest in peace. Mm. Well, it's unfortunate. Mm. Our condolences. Our condolences does, to the family, does, the relatives, yeah. the friends. Does anyone know whether he was married? How priests could he be married? married? He was a priest. He was a priest. But was some a, of them are married. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> They're not allowed to marry, get married. <laughs> Where I come so, from in M, we know a few who are married. And uh, what's your story with the priest? Uh, <laughs> oh, my story is I have no trust in them. Okay, I just, that's a broader conversation. It's about the church, not about the priests themselves. We shall talk about it during the break. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> this is true, by the way. We are talk the church is a whole and it's a big a topic. Wow. Yeah, very big. But, Many. but let's leave it at the priest. Please and we are, we are sad for that. So we are still on Let's Be Real. And as I can see in the panel, people are so real. Don't follow the advice on cheating, though. <laughs> We are taking a break and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Let's Be Real. It has been entertaining, hilarious, and the viewpoints from this panel. Anyway, <laughs> don't take blue pill and there's no winner in those games. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what you're getting. But away from cheating, away from issues of family, let me get to something which happened this week which is a bit drastic. <laughs> the Azimio coalition called for Mandamano on uh, last Wednesday and people turned out in numbers. Thousands of people turned out. And uh, there were also other uh, strikes by long distance truckers, the Matatu Owners Associations. So the country was at a standstill. And in one of the areas where the flare up was, was around Murolongo. And there was a gentleman, there's a young man who was passing, the policemen in their gear. This man just walked past them. Walked past these policemen without flinching. I was shocked. Did he have a stone? No, he just walked past them. The police were looking at him and they're wondering, then this reminds me, and a day before, uh, President William Ruto was in a function, and there was a, I could see some young men recording when he was telling guys, Nakesho msiende maandamano, and these guys were saying, Kesho utaona moto. So is it that Kenyans stopped fearing if they believe in something, they go the whole way, like that one young man just walking past police, or these guys who are busy recording the president and telling him, you just say what you are saying, but tomorrow we are going for Mandaman. I want to say something there. Yeah. I think we have reached a very dangerous um, uh, uh, time in Kenya. I feel so that so many people feel they have nothing to lose. You know, the difference between very, very rich people and very, very poor people is the same. There is no difference. Because the rich people, if I lose that one, I still have. Mm. And the very poor people, I have nothing to lose. So they have no stake. So we have so many people who feel they have no stake in peace. So they can thrive in the chaos and everything. And th that's the thing. Like, you wanna kill me, I'm already dead. You're, these people feel they are walking dead. 
you know a lot of Kenyans feel like that because they and I think it's it's all over the world the cost of living is so high like people feel hopeless people feel they're like what's the difference shoot me if you want and that's a dangerous place to be yeah and the, the other thing is that on the other hand we have people in Kenya who have so 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 much so much that what you're burning one house I'll just go and get the other one like mm. they feel nothing and th these two people are very dangerous people we need a big in between which we have lost yeah so so we are, we are saying that the the, the rich people you see, remember that the, there's a the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics report which says that only three percent of Kenyans earn hundred and hundred thousand and above only 3%. And initially, a year ago, they had said that less than 100,000 Kenyans earn 100,000 and above. Less than 100,000. You are a country of 43 million with the highest workforce that the ages between 18 and, 20 and 35 is around 70% of this population. Mm -hmm. It means that the whole lot of these people really don't have money or have nothing or they have very little. If they are making money, then 100,000, unless you're doing your own business. But the, the same business, we still have put a lot of taxes and laws that has made it not profitable. It does not help the business for the environment where you can do business. So even if you're selling your macadamia, you have to really struggle to make ends meet. The cost of living is high. The cost of uh, mm. food production is high the cost of fertilizer, the cost of anything has just gone high. And actually the biggest is elec electricity. The fuel crisis, I don't know what we signed for. Okay, I feel like because of the hard economic times, you find that uh, some of these things we've boycotted are the things that were feeding these people. Like for example, because right now my life is hard, I will take down a few of my services. If I used to send someone to the market for me, now I'll take myself because that money is not there. If I loved doing my nails, I will cut down on that because it's not a necessity. So you find that by cutting these services down, you've denied these people the jobs. And it's not our fault. It's because the hard economic times are pushing us to doing things the way that we are doing them, even if we know very well that people depend on them. And um, not to say that that man is that example of Alipita Katikatiao, lakini awakumuona, but he really was going through something. It was not that easy for you to just walk and pass by. You don't do that. That's not mm -hmm. courage. Mm -hmm. But yes. the country right now as it is, a lot of people don't have anything to eat when they go home at night. A lot of people. Like the doctor said, from the rich and the poor, that gap is the problem. And uh, I wish there was something that could be done even sooner for that to change. Because the more we progress in this situation, the worse it gets. And it's not right. So if people are living in some, sorry to your turn, mm -hmm. but if yeah. people are living in some ivory tower and realizing that actually, so there's a whole generation. I don't remember, you know, as a business person, I just decided, can I just really move on with the business? Because in the last maybe 10 or 15 years, mm. Have you ever heard anyone saying how the economy is booming, doing so well? You no. know, in the time of Kibaki, we had 5.8%. Wow. And we could feel it. We could actually feel that. In the last, this is a whole generation. It's almost, um, how many? 15 years. Mm. No one is talking ab about how the, the economy has just been tanking and tanking and these mm. things. It has been going and there's a whole generation that is really disenfranchised. Right. No jobs, no nothing, they've got nothing to do. Industries are closing, so we take it for granted. If this manufacturing farm is just mm. going to close anyway, we just think others are coming and they haven't come. Mm. And that, for me, this makes me think of our education system. What skills does it equip us with? You see, for you, I've heard you talk about pivoting. For you, when the economy started tanking, you've had to come up with new methods to survive. 
So I'm thinking that our generation has been caught up in a place. If you people remember, home science was taken, home science and art and craft, they were taken off our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So you find that even creativity nowadays is not very common. Yeah. There's only a few people. Actually, when as a child, a guitar, oh my God, they're such a star. In uh, my parents' time, even our, their housekeeper, growing up, I remember their laundry guy. There's a guy who ran a laundromat when I was a child. He was my dad's friend. He was the best guitar player, so he would uh, sit around with men, have drinks, talk about life. So they were therapists for each other. Our generation is a generation of lone wolves, if we're being honest. Yes. You're stressed, you don't have the skill set to even, uh, what do you call it, run on your own. Mm -hmm. See, for you, at least you're equipped with skills and experience. But Me, I cannot, thing, I cannot sleep hungry. If yes. everything, whatever, I'll yes. even go and till people's land. I know how to till. Right. I know, but, like, I know I have so many skills. But our generation, they don't look at that. us. Yeah. How many of us can iron our clothes? How many times have you seen people calling someone with material because I'm a picker chapels in Atokana? Can you imagine? <laughs> chapels in Atokana is each <laughs> one. Yeah. The layered ones. Oh. <laughs> mm. So just because someone cannot make chapel, they're not wife material. So the basics that the older generation, I'm 30 now, so by older generation, you know what I mean. Yeah. The generation before us. Uh, these people are equipped with all of these skill sets. Do you know my mother can talk on phone, cook, and sit. my mom will be 70 this year. July 27th, actually. Happy birthday, mom, in advance. So, my mom can sew, can uh, sew in a button. Mm -hmm. Like, basics, my mom would not, at steam, at carpet, you know. Sisi, our generation, the basics, even tailoring, how to nice skills. And then we wonder why someone will go numb. That is someone who is just numb. I'm sure they're an autopilot. I'm sure Kimuliza Takumbuki, they were tear gassed. Yes. So, yeah, so the, like there are questions whoa. actually we need to start asking yes. as Kenyans. Yes. So when you, you have retailers, yeah, who have shelves full of things mm. that are not even made in Kenya. Right. First of all, if these retailers should ask themselves, if you are bringing all these things How and not, not giving Kenyan business people right. an opportunity to put things on your shelves, mm. Who do you think is coming to buy those things? Oh goodness, so yes. Kenyans, we need to start asking these questions. Mm. We need to start buying things True. that are made in Kenya. Yeah. Mm. We need to stimulate our own industry. Because nobody is coming to rescue us. Imagine nobody. Nobody mm. is coming. You need Dr. C there. We you. just Sorry. need to, we, we need to think about it, create our own industries, and just get on moving. Otherwise, Everybody, people, maybe, I don't know what's going on. I'm not in government, but I, I, I have a feeling this, there are powers that be that want to weaken the Kenya shilling so that it's easier for them to bring in their things, yeah. kill all our local industry, yeah? And then we become collateral. Then we, ju we just become dependent. We have to fight it. Yes. Yeah? We have to fight. We have to think about, we have to buy our own things, create our own industries. Mm. Do yeah. you know, Dr. C, sorry to jump onto what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The other day I was at Quick Mart Kilelesha with my neighbor, Ivan, and he was very surprised when we were buying a uh, sauce. And he took a popular brand I won't mention, and I told him, no, send, uh, put it back, give me one of those, the, one of those the ones that are not popular. And he's asking me, why would you take a brand that is not, uh, that is not popular? And then it was in that moment, I realized he has a chance. Finally, I'm turning into you, an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, a mm -hmm. job creator. My response was, I know how much it takes to even get this product on the shelf. I'm going to take this person because this person's skill, you know, you send, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, when you're launching your product, they ask for certain skills and you're not paid until they're SKUs, sold. SKUs, yes. So Consignment, someone, it's yes. called. Someone is over there praying that please someone pick my sauce on the shelf. And it was in that moment I made that conscious decision to support my economy with that one shilling. Mm -hmm. I figured that someone is waiting for that sauce to sell so they can keep the light on in their industry. Yeah. I think these are decisions we need to start making as Kenyans, yes. more conscious decisions. That new one that is over there, 
Na ima ni kwa made in Kenya. Yes, made in Kenya. Mm. Can you buy it? Because that's why your mom is going to ask for a job, your cousin, your auntie. That job will feed you almost directly when you think mm. about it. That so it, product, sorry. So it's not just yes. about the fi repealing the finance bill alone and, and blaming it on the president. What Start with yourself. Yeah. What are you buying that is made in Kenya? This thing is yes. really, at the end of the day, is about money mfukoni, pesa mfukoni, mm. isn't it? That's yeah. what it's about. Right. So we have to start by putting money in our own pockets. Imagine it boils down to equipping local businesses, local products, and right. putting money in our own pockets. Mm -hmm. And you must elect, I think the biggest yes. also thing is you need to elect people who can help you. If you're electing thugs, <laughs> rapists, Yes. Con, con men. No, 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 no. Murderers. Murderers. Because they're very good with PR. We no, don't know. No, no. <laughs> Remember that all the scandals you have True. is through the political class. True. You know, in this country today, even a toothpick, we import toothpicks. Right. That's, That's a, a very sad thing. There's nothing. We do not have local toothpick manufacturer. Mineral mm. logging is killing us. Yes. So now, what am I saying? I'm saying that if you have a, a political class which I have named their thieves, their murderers, their robbers, their con men, their wash wash guys you put in parliament, right. then you'll have a bandit economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now what we are suffering, we are suffering from a bandit economy, an economy where the wastages are more than the money we collect. You collect money, mm -hmm. for example, the expressway, the which was uh, brought down along the Longo. The Minister for Roads, my good friend Murkomen, tells us it's seven or five million. Mm. Out of his head, <laughs> surely. That's an avenue for people to eat. Right. So you quote a figure. Just a random figure. A random figure, because if I look at that damage personally, I know it cannot even be 200 million. So you, you quote seven or five million, so that you create an avenue for people to say, right. we repaired that. It's, it's a ticketing booth which was brought down. All those chumas on the road, the, the wire mesh, and those guys just brought it down. They didn't cut it away. They didn't cut it away. It will just be. So the cost of welding, huh? Murkomen is telling us, mm. is seven or five million. And, and we want us to believe. Mm -hmm. but, but electricity has gone high. <laughs> anyway, it sounds so fishy. I think we need to move <laughs> to, to the next business. event yeah. that is such a fishy affair. Yeah. Like, surely Kenyans. What, what, what has happened to us? We've even resorted to cheating each other. So recently there was this story, and it literally happened. So the, some farmers in central Kenya were duped into buying tadpoles, frogs, tadpoles. Yeah? As seedlings for fish. Like, surely. What do you guys think? I think I'm what not going this? to eat fish for the next few months. <laughs> Let's start but when they grew up, they became frogs. frogs. Yeah. They found the whole pond is full of frogs. So, so Omena is what fish. I'm stopping. Uh, no, it's an evolution of information. Listen, at, around, around, around that area. There are two things, Dr. C, happened. One is that the guy who bought tadpoles mm -hmm. and the woman who bought avocado, which were painted. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the one, no, no, I didn't see the painted one. What happened so, there? So, who is painting avocados and selling? Were they you buying them at the night? Were they, they were buying, buying them at the night? night? What, what, what this guy used? Oh. The man was found out and he said, yeah, I did it. This guy, <laughs> what he, he, used, he was doing, he carries one ripe avocado. Yes. And... The rest of the avocado he paints with that color which looks like they are, uh, they are Tapentine. Right. Like Tapentine, yes. or something. So now when you're buying, you know you're buying and you're in your car. And akwambia, nikukatie moja, you say yes, then he chops and you see, why? It mm. has avocado, nice. So you say, put for me in the boot. Is this what is meiva? Yes, you check this, look at the same color. So you, when you're eating this one, he's packing you raw avocado behind. So when this woman went home and tried to allow them two or three days to get ripe, they were actually going bad because mm -hmm. they were not really ready to be harvested. Mm -hmm. So when he checked, he rubbed on something to wash it, the paint was coming out. So the Kenyans have deci de deci de decided that they will be robbing other Kenyans. One, 
when you're going to buy fish fingerlings, because that's what the, the, you, you, you need to buy from a recognized seller. Otherwise, you'll buy tadpoles. Tad, a frog's tadpole and a, a small fish or a fingerling looks the same until they grow to a certain size. And they're smaller than omena, by the way. Because mm -hmm. when a fingerling does not look like omena, it's something which is just a big head and a tail. Mm. And that's how fish looks when they hatch. And that's how tadpoles also look when frogs lay eggs. So you have to be very clear that you buy things which from recognized people. Secondly, you're buying avocado along the way. Why don't you ask yourself, are these fruits on, are they in season? Or they are out of season. Yeah, but, but, but you know what, CEO, sorry, yes. I've, I've cut you short, but the, the, the story here is actually bigger than yes. just painting and just morality. Yeah. I think it's a place of where we as Kenyans must call ourselves into a meeting, perhaps yes. not into a maandamano, but a meeting, <laughs> <laughs> and realize that we are so interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Because this story goes back to the same story where people inject bananas yeah. oh, yes. for those bananas to ripen, to ripen easily. Mm. Yeah. And this story, I hope some of the lawmakers are listening, but also some of the people who are involved in these corrupt dealings really do understand how this connects to them. Sometimes, and, and I'm not justifying anything, maybe there is this mother who really needs to afford medical for their child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The child is there really sick and, are, and they have that banana in the backyard yeah. which they need to go and sell. Then they, hear, they know, oh, and this place they'll only buy ripe ones because I really need money urgently. Mm. They inject. Now you, without knowing, suspecting, you are in this tender thing, you inflated the price and therefore the medicine is like how you buy it anyway in that whatever it is you're buying. And then the next thing, you're flying yourself off to, I don't know which country, to go for cancer treatment. Not relating it to that uh, corrupt deal that you did. Mm -hmm. Not relating it to which that child who was down. in hospital could not actually afford the medical bill. Mm -hmm. Not relating it to this mamamboga who, who was struggling, who had to go and get that vegetable from the street that right. has been planting and... You know, when you grow this vegetable next to the street, there's a lead from the cars that mm. is actually coming, or mm. the lead from mm. that stream, that Nairobi River that mm. you are throwing. Mm. So we have to realize that we, wa we are all interconnected. Yeah. yeah? So by the time somebody is actually ceasing to be human and painting avocado with turpentine and it's to look that it's ripe, where have we reached? Yeah. We are interconnected. So the next time you're getting a corrupt deal, that is the deal that could be digging your grave. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. And it may not be directly related because you'll go to jail. It will just be because of that bad thing you buy in the supermarket. Mm? And speaking of interconnection to our roots and stuff, I saw this story and I'm sure you as a queen of culture on the show will, might be surprised by this. Apparently in Tanzania, there's Zanzibar, uh, men have been banned from plating their hair unless you get a million Tanzania shilling permit to uh, plait your hair. And that is uh, an equivalent, an um, approximate of 58,000 Kenya shillings. Gosh. You have to get a permit. Wait, I thought Africans were supposed to be protecting our culture. I thought our... Why is it cultural to braid hair? No, I thought people used to do whatever they wanted to be creative with their hair. No. And the Mau Mau, the, listen, the listen, dreadlocks. Listen, and young man. That was <laughs> I and don't the remember anyone. The or, or no, 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 or, or no. Or but that Zanzibar that is, protecting their culture now. Listen. We are not plating your, our hair. Yeah. Oh, for them, so they didn't have For, for them, that mm. is their culture. So yeah. they're protecting it. So for you to try to go aside from that culture, mm. you have to pay for a certain But they decided fine. now that that, that... that thing was was mentioned in 2015, but it was just but passed a few days ago. a country ago. that is sinking further and further into poverty, here is what we are focusing on. 
Which country is sinking further into poverty? Okay, as a continent, not even. No, a no, no. Tanzania has been growing at seven percent even last yes, year. Yes, but growing. In what it has overtaken no, Kenya. Seven percent. It has growth. overtaken GDP. Kenya. GDP. Yeah, you guys okay. just sit pretty there. So let's listen. Talk about oh, currency. sit pretty. <laughs> listen. Let's talk about listen. currency. Don't they have the weakest in like East? No, 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 no. And currency. I'm just thinking that's where we are headed. That's where yeah. we are headed. Like a to. million what shillings to be yeah. equated to fifty-eight thousand Kenya shillings, and there is a million Tanzania. Gosh, we shall be carrying money in in boxes, like in <laughs> to just go and buy bread. No, I'm just I think saying, let's talk about the that permit. You see, I think like, the, what what was the genesis of that permit? Listen, the Zanzibar is a, is is a, is a Muslim state. Oh yeah, it's Muslim. Remember that after the unification of Zanzibar and Tanganyika to call Tanzania, Tanzania. Uh, Zanzibar has its own set of laws which is more Muslim mm -hmm. and in a Muslim setup plating of hair is not allowed it's culturally not right, All right. so as much as they're in a bigger union because mm -hmm. that's why we say Mungano wa, demo, uh, Mungano wa Taifa wa Tanzania or ta, Mungano wa Tanzania it's because it's, it's a union of two states basically and Zanzibar, Pemba, those small islands there, the islands, they, formed, they form uh, a very important part of yeah. the ecosystem. But they are strictly Muslim. Oh, yeah. And they have the Muslim set of rules and their culture. So they do not want this modernity which we have in the cosmopolitan areas to erode their Muslim culture. Mm. That's why they put that. Because they probably they've seen, and remember that in those coastal areas, one of the biggest problems they've had is drug abuse. I see. So when people do drugs, people do all me weird things. There's a lot of sexual perversions and all those things. So they're saying, for us to retain our culture, let's have a set of rules let's which, penalize yeah, mm -hmm. let's penalize. Yeah. And and culture is important. Yes. Yeah. It, it just and they've me. given you an option, by the way. They yeah. say, if you have money. It just hit me. But, 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 but uh, my, like my question glamour, is, right? are you paying for the length of hair or are you just paying to maintain the same hair all through? Just uh, for the length of hair, whatever length. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Then if, you're, if you want to maintain that, then mm. it's okay. Hey. It's as long as they're maintaining their culture because that is one thing that we are failing right now. Yeah. Maintaining culture is the hardest. So if they've decided to go the low way, it's good. Yeah, good for them. I hope they're investing in the economy the same way they're investing in Hair. Okay, you have a problem with hair. <laughs> no, I'm just saying in Africa, I think we have too many issues. I don't think hair is even number 40 of the issues. Uh, anyway, I'm tired. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> hair is a very huge issue. <laughs> I can't. Collins, <laughs> you see, our African culture yes. dictates that we do a couple of things. Mm. That's why we are proudly African. Yeah. If you go today and introduce yourself into another country and they say you are Collins, mm. they ask you, so are you white? Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because many people, we've ran away from what was ours, that right. we have become something we do not know who we are mm. anymore. Mm. So if you can keep a bit of culture, a bit of, and that's why you see these kids, this lack of respect in homes mm. nowadays, this lack of privacy. A kid will find you guys watching a movie and he says, Dad, even me, I want to watch. And just changes, flips the channel. And then, so if we can manage to keep our law and order, yeah. and culture is part of law, yeah. it helps us a lot. Yeah. So there are these things which you don't say, uh, we have other problems. Yes, we have problems. Mm. But our problems, we have to deal with them, all of them concurrently. We have to deal with our, how we live, how our culture will uh, grow uh, things, how we have our production, how Health to reduce crisis. the taxes. We have to deal with all of them yes. at that time. Oh. Also, the symbolism of some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there are certain things that symbolize other things. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's what the government is trying to deal with, yeah. the symbolism of that hair. For mm. me, it's mm. less of, um, less of uh, financial, mm. but more of moral. Yes, it's moral. Yeah. Yeah. I just maintain a moral fabric. 
So, yep. it's been real, guys. It's been real. I'm one of the hosts, Dr. C, a reality star, business mogul. I know how to build a business um, with zero budgets, how to launch, how to stay motivated. I'm a business mentor. We actually do have a school, Samantha's Bridal. We train emerging people who want to be in the creative business. Reach out and let's build Kenya. And thank you so much for staying with us. My name is Collins, makeup artist, a businessman. As you can see, my products are here and more on my social media. And I'm also a lover of Samantha Wines. Oh. Good night. Good night and cheers. And thank you so much for joining. I've been, it's been great being here with you. I've enjoyed every bit of it. I've learned a lot too. I am Maria on all social media, Maria Nyambane Waweru, the author of Marriage is a Scam and Love, the Original You, also the founder of The Young Magazine. You can find me on all social as Maria Nyambane Waweru, except YouTube, where I am uh, Hearts of African Arts. These are my books, guys. Congratulations, Maria. Great job. But marriage, uh, she is telling you marriage is a scam, but she's happily married. And uh, I'm also happily married. Marriage is no longer a scam. It's how you take it, gentle ladies and gentlemen out there. Uh, just know that you get what you invest in. If you invest wrong, you get a wrong output. But if you invest right, you get a right input. Now, I'm CEO Charles Otieno, I'm your host. Thank you for being with us today. It's Let's Be Real, Keep It Locked Always, Hot Conversations, it's yours for the asking.